Welcome to Unit 1, Lesson 8. Okay, this is Part 1. You'll see we start with a warm-up, and you need to solve some quadratic equations. But there's this little note here, and says there are two solutions, right? There are two solutions. There's an x squared here. There are two solutions. The biggest exponent, or the degree, is 2. And it, it says this, don't forget the plus or minus. Okay? I will explain what that means in a moment. But first, before we start doing anything, let me rack your brain for some previous knowledge that you should have. You do not have to write down what I'm about to do in blue. If I had some sort of equation here, and you had to solve this, okay, I'm going to start, I'll move this here for now. You should know, okay, well, I have one variable to solve for. So I'm going to use the opposite math. I'm going to subtract 10. 3x equals 30. And then I divide by 3. So x would equal 10. There you go. There's one answer because technically that's x to the 1. Simple. You have these quadratics. You don't always have to factor them to solve them. Meaning, if there's only one x term, okay, a lot of things we have say x squared plus x plus 7 equals 0. I would have to factor and solve that or use the quadratic formula. Or, now that we know how to use the calculator, I can use the calculator and see where it touches the x axis. But, what happens if I only had one of these x terms? All I would have to do is subtract 7 from both sides, wouldn't I? x would equal negative 7. Let's back it up even further here. What happens if the one x term I have was not the x, but the x squared? I can still do the opposite math because I only have one x term. If I have two x terms, I cannot solve by opposite math. I would have to factor, use the quadratic formula, or I would have to use the calculator. Or maybe there's another way that we're going to learn today called completing the square. But I digress. Let me get rid of this. And let's apply this whole solving for one variable thing doing opposite math to this situation we have here. So now what I'm about to do, you can copy. All right? I have one x term. That's it. So I'm going to use the opposite math. I'm going to start by dividing by 5. So I have x squared equals 5 goes into 80. 16 times. Now, in order to do the opposite math, for example, the opposite of addition is subtraction. The opposite of multiplication is division, right? The opposite of squaring something is the square root. So these will actually cancel, just like my plus and minus cancel and my multiplication and division cancel. However, if I have to subtract on one side, don't I have to subtract on the other? If I divide by 3 on one side, don't I divide by 3 on the other? So if I take the square root on one side, I have to take the square root on the other. So this cancels. I have x equals 4. This is where our nice note comes in handy. Don't forget the plus and minus. There are actually two answers, a positive 4 and a negative 4. First off, you know you should have two answers because my biggest exponent, or my degree, is 2. Second thing, 
when I had x squared equals 16, I should know, well, if I square 4, that's a positive 16. But if I square negative 4, that also gives me a positive 16. Here's my check, okay? I could have thrown a positive or negative 4 into this one and checked it as well. But this is the concept you need to understand why it's a plus and a minus. All right? Let's take a look at the second one and do the same thing. All right? Now, this is a DOPS. It's a difference of perfect squares. I could factor it that way, T-bone it, which means solve it, and I can get two answers. But since there's only one X term, I'm going to solve by opposite math. I'm going to add 25 to both sides. If I add 25 to the left, I need to add 25 to the right. Opposite math cancels. 36X squared equals 25. All right. The next step, opposite math again. I'm currently multiplying 36 times x squared. So I'm going to divide by 36. Opposite math cancels. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So now I end up with this x squared equals 25 over 36. Let's get a little bit more room here. And we know that the opposite of squaring something is the square root. So these cancel, and I have x. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. Now, just to rack your brain from a memory that you're probably trying to repress, fractions and square roots. Quick review. If I have a fraction under one square root, I can put the top or the numerator under a square root and the bottom or the denominator under a square root. Okay? So, if I have one fraction under a square root, that's the same thing as saying square root of the top over square root of the bottom. It goes both ways. If I have it this way, I can change it back that way if I want. But I want it this way for a reason, because both of those numbers are perfect squares. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 36 is 6. So my answer is 5, 6. But wait, there's more. There should be two answers, plus and minus. Let's not forget our plus and minus. Let's not forget our plus and minus. Because this is a quadratic, you should get two answers. And there you go. Okay, what do you remember about completing the square? We have this example, okay, on the left here. Okay, we have this example right here. And here are some steps to just kind of refresh your memory. Now, let's go over these steps, okay, from beginning to end, and then we'll apply them. Number one, I need to move the constants to the right side of the equal sign. So basically, I want to keep everything that has an x on one side and everything without an x goes to the other side. Now, step two is the whole, it's the meat and potatoes. It's the brains behind the operation, okay? You need to know step two, otherwise you will never, ever, ever effectively do completing the square, okay? I take my b value. My b value, that's the coefficient in front of just the x. Not the x squared, just the x. And what do I do to it? I need to divide it by 2 
And then whenever I get there, I need to square it. Okay? And I take that and I add that to both sides of my equations, and that's going to complete my square. That's why this is called completing the square. Now, after that is step three. I factor the left side, and I write it as a binomial squared. I'm going to make that step three real easy for you. Real easy. This sounds tough because, okay, factor, which, okay, I, I may be good at it, I may be shaky at it, but binomial squared, don't worry. That's just saying you're having two terms. You're putting them in parentheses, and you're squaring the outside. Don't worry. I got you covered. Number four says I need to take the square root of both sides and remember to write plus or minus and then solve for the variable. Steps three through five, we're going to do really, really quickly and be really, really good at it. So let's actually apply these steps right now. Step one, move the constant to the right side. So anything without an x, that's my constant. Anything with no x, that's my 5. I'm going to add 5 to both sides. <whistles> x squared minus 4x equals 5. Here comes the brain work. Number 2. I take my b value. That's the coefficient or the number in front of the x. Negative 4. I take negative 4, I cut it in half, and then I square it. Now, I'm going to do this in a two-step process. I could do this right in my head right now, and you probably could too. But there's a reason I'm going to do it one step at a time. If I take negative 4 and divide it by 2, I end up with negative 2, and I have to square that. If I square negative 2... I get 4. Now, many of you might have been able to go right from here to here, but this right here is ultra important, and I will explain why in a moment. So I take this value, my 4, and I add it to both sides of my equation. So I take this 4, I add 4, and I add 4. Let me write everything neat now. x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 9. Now, this whole factor, if you are bad at factoring, you should be able to factor this by finding two numbers that multiply to the last number that add to the middle number. Okay? You should be able to do this. Right now, it's a perfect square. I can even use my perfect square factoring. You don't need to know that at all. How come? Because when I factor this, and I'm going to go yellow, when I factor this, oh, I don't know if that shows up too good. Let's go purple. When I factor this, I'm going to get something squared. I know it's x. Here's why this step is important. What's ever in the parenthesis here goes in the parenthesis here. It's a negative 2, right? There you go. You don't have to remember how to factor for this particular process. Let me state that again one more time. What's ever in parentheses here goes in parentheses here. Whatever that is, if it's a positive 3, I put plus 3 there. If it's negative 7, I put negative 7 there. If it's 1 half, I put 1 half there. Always, every time. Now, we basically got to solve this, right? This is equal to 9. So I got to get rid of my square. Man, good thing we just reviewed that. The opposite of squaring is square rooting, right? This cancels. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. 
So now I have x minus 2 left without my square equals the square root of 9 is 3. Let us not forget plus and minus. Now you know why that's important. I should get two answers here, shouldn't I? Because the degree is 2. I should get two answers. So now I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So I've got x equals 2 plus and minus 3. These are two whole numbers. You should be able to evaluate this very easily. This is like saying 2 plus 3 and 2 minus 3. I expect you to do this. 5 and negative 1. Those are my two answers. If I would have ended up with something like 7 plus and minus radical 2, you don't have to rewrite that. That doesn't come out nice and neat. Okay? But if you have two whole numbers, you should be able to add them and subtract them at this point in your mathematical career. Okay. That's fine and dandy, but Visca, the next term has a coefficient or a number in front of the x squared. Okay. What if that happens? Well, I just divide it out. Meaning, I like to get my number without an x over to the other side first before I divide. So I add 10. <laughs> 2x squared plus 4x equals 10. I want what's in front of my x squared to be 1 because that's what really makes this process easy. So I'm going to divide this by 2, which means I need to divide everything by 2 to make sure my equation stays balanced. Now I have x squared plus 2x equals 5. From this point, you need to take your b value. Cut it in half and then square it because that's the brains. Add that number to both sides and continue to solve. So, my B value is 2. I take 2, I cut it in half, and then I square it. I'm going to do this in two steps instead of one. What's in parentheses simplifies to 1 and I square it. 1 squared is 1. This is the number that I'm adding to both sides. I now have I now have x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 6. Alright? We have a perfect square on the left side. It's something squared. Whatever number is in parentheses here, it happens to be a positive 1, right? Goes in parentheses here, you're welcome. That equals 6. So now I just solve for my x by doing opposite math. I have a square. I need to get rid of it, so I do the square root. Bang, bang. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I have x plus 1 equals square root of 6, right? Plus and minus. Don't forget, I should have two answers because my degree or my biggest exponent is 2. So now, I just subtract 1 from both sides. And I simply write it, x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 6. I do not need to evaluate that because the square root of 6 isn't going to give us a nice whole number. Now, if I wanted to, I could have done the quadratic formula to this side. Negative b plus or minus b squared, yada, yada, yada. 
after I would have evaluated everything and simplified everything, it would have given me this answer. I think this process is simpler when it comes to having answers that aren't whole numbers because there's not the division. You don't have to simplify. It's, it's not crazy. Okay? I will see you during next video.